What's up, man? You good? What's up? I'm good. How are you? All right, doing? young brother, everything's good. Everything's Selling great. out arenas and everything. Yeah. Starting to act different, huh? You, no, you, no, ain't, no. you ain't been calling me and hanging out the way we used to hang out. Well, I mean, you haven't. I mean, you try to get in contact with me, you know, through all my, you know, business, you know, partners and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But you, you never really got my number, so. Right. Okay. Number? Welcome, listeners, to a special episode on the realm where we delve into the reactions from top podcasters to the shocking allegations against Sean Diddy Combs and the sex cult affiliated to him. From in-depth analysis to heated debates, we'll explore how this story is unfolding in the world of popular podcasts. Like everything, the boxes that are being checked, does it kind of look like a cult? Uh, the the level of insulation that he had, the the people that he had surrounding him on the payroll. I mean, there's even uh, in some of the civil allegations uh, are talking about that he had three women on the payroll strictly for sex. Uh, mm. I mean, <laughs> it, it, it seems kind of cultish to me if you're able to do things that way and, and very much, you know, not have influence from the outside. You're very much controlling who's coming and going and what people are saying to you and all that people that are around you are pretty much worshiping you as if you were some sort of a god. Will record their girlfriends or wives um, during sex secretly and then post this online. I mean, it's r really horrendous, but there there is a specific specific type of of sex offense where that is what people enjoy doing why <laughs> i don't know yeah. I, i'm just i am baffled by this because it's like okay you we're in a world now where if you have a certain kink or something there's a website for you there, there there's yeah. Right off the bat, the death metal detectives tackled the shocking allegations against Sean Diddy Combs with their signature direct and unfiltered approach. Known for their raw and honest discussions, the hosts immediately expressed their initial shock, mirroring the widespread disbelief among fans and the public. Their reaction set the stage for a deeper examination of the implications of such serious accusations against a towering figure in the music industry. As they delved into the topic, the death metal detectives didn't just linger on the sensational aspects of the news. Instead, they shifted the conversations towards the broader impact, questioning how these allegations might affect Diddy's career, his business ventures, and his public persona. The discussion extended beyond the individual to touch on systemic issues within the entertainment industry, including the power dynamics and the culture of celebrity that can sometimes shield wrongdoing. The hosts also critically analyzed the media's role in shaping public perception of the scandal. They encouraged their listeners to consider the sources of their information and to think critically about the balance between sensational reporting and journalistic integrity. This reflection prompted a broader dialogue about media consumption and the responsibility of both the press and the audience in discerning the truth. Throughout the episode, the death metal detectives maintained a balance between engaging their audience with a compelling content and fostering a thoughtful discussion and accountability and celebrity culture. They urged their listeners to not only consume news, but to engage with it critically, making the podcast not just informative, but also a catalyst for deeper reflection on how society views and reacts to celebrities and their actions. This episode reaffirms why the death metal detectives are a respected voice in podcasting, known for tackling complex issues with depth and nuance. For many years, yeah, I mean, before Zesty, he was Zesty. Yeah. He's always kind of, he dances. I mean, dancing, dead giveaway. Yeah. He's not particularly a good dancer, but if he's ever on camera, he's always dancing. He said some very suspicious things, which if you just get on TikTok, Twitter, whatever your social media binging of choices, you can find uh, black people that have compiled clips of suspicious podcast appearances where Diddy has all but said he likes to suck him and... Mm -hmm touch him and uh, do ecstasy with him and you know he bangs dudes and that's whatever the problem is when you and i think this is certainly a gay fetish where it, it's probably just too easy to bang other gay dudes so the meat that you would like to acquire is straight guys yeah who you can finagle into something that they would be generationally shamed by yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, believe whatever you want to. I think that I think viewing people as by and large good and, and allowing them to do whatever they want to is the way to live. However, we all know that what's happened in the last five to maybe even as far away as 15 years ago is because of social media 
the way you get engagement is if you can put a camera on somebody and make them say something for a clip that damns them. Yeah. Meanwhile, the Law and Crime Network podcast took a different angle, diving into the potential legal consequences for Diddy in the light of allegations. Known for their detailed legal analysis, the hosts drew on similar high-profile cases to sketch out possible scenarios that could unfold for the music mogul. Their discussion provided listeners with a comprehensive look at the intricacies of legal proceedings in celebrity cases, exploring everything from initial charges to potential trials and settlements. The hosts expertly broke down complex legal concepts, making them accessible to their audience while speculating on how Diddy's situation may play out in court. They considered various precedents and how they could influence the handling of the case, giving their listeners a well-rounded understanding of the potential legal landscape facing Diddy. This segment not only informed but also enriched the listeners perspective and how justice is navigated in the celebrity world. In any event, um, but no direct commentary on the case is what any lawyer would tell their client to do. And so I would not expect him to comment on the case. Um, you don't want him to say something that's going to be picked apart by the prosecution later on. So that's likely why um, he's not saying anything directly about the case. That's very wise not to do that. You know, he knows he's in hot water right now and he knows there's a lot of social media speculation regarding him. And also that most recent child love came while he was in a relationship with someone else. So that makes a lot of sense to not have the comments on her post. The mogul was spotted riding his bike in Miami, relaxing dockside, drinking a glass of wine. I think there's a little bit of a crack in the veneer because in one of the outings that he had where he was riding bicycles, he passed by some fans and said for them to like, you know, pray for him or think about him or whatever the case may be. Diddy is a master of the image. You know, this is shiny suit Diddy. This is the same guy that you know has this music career that he built off of image alone he it, he's not the most talented rapper but he created this big image of this big music mo mogul and people bought into it and made him um, by extension, the music mogul that he envisioned himself to be. The Valuetainment podcast broadened the discussion, offering insightful commentary on how the allegations against Diddy could ripple beyond his personal and professional life, impacting the entire music industry in the black community. The hosts delved into the potential long-term effects on Diddy's brand, his business ventures, and his influence within cultural spheres. They explored how such high-profile allegations can shift public and industry perceptions, potentially leading to broader cultural and economic consequences. For instance, they discuss the possibility of shifts in artist collaborations, sponsorships, and the general willingness of the industry to align with Diddy's ventures. Furthermore, the hosts touched on the implications for the black community, addressing concerns about stereotypes and the responsibility of influential figures to uphold a positive image. Valuetainment also highlighted the role of social responsibility in the entertainment sector, sparking a conversation about accountability, influence, and the power dynamics that shape the music industry's response to scandals. This segment provided listeners with a nuanced understanding of the interconnectedness of celebrity actions and their wider cultural impacts, making it a compelling addition to the discourse surrounding the allegations against Diddy. From your perspective though, you, you actually spent time with Diddy. When you used to go to New York, you guys, you would spend time with them and he would spend time with you when he would come. You guys would go hang out together with obviously other peers. Did you notice anything around Diddy where you said this is a little bit, you know, obviously there's a woman, you're having a good time, you're partying, you're doing your thing. But did you ever see anything where it was out of line where you said, I think this guy likes men or I think he likes certain things that's a little weird? Well, well all due respect to Puffy, you got to realize one thing. He didn't start off like that. I'm quite sure somebody taught him that, and that's more got deep it. in the industry. You guys who got involved with a lot of people who were their mentors, instead of having a guy to mentor your own father, they was having these guys they mentor. And when that happens in the industry, they, it was done to them, they do to the next person. So I felt that Puffy was a regular, normal guy. And then when he started hanging with the guys in the industry, they did things to him, and then allegedly he did things to Usher, 
it goes on and on. Does it really matter at that point? Well, Justin Bieber's I mean, now kind of. just, I mean, he was young with blonde hair. Like, he was like, what, 17, 18? Did you but, see this video? Mm-hmm. Yo, this is, Watch this him is, pat him down. Look, he just, this is checking recently. for potential Look, he's uh, touching wires. His, Watch he's this. touching pat, his pat, chest. Pat, pat, pat. He's touching his chest. Make sure you don't have a wire on you. Look so at I, that. I got, I got a message. Weird. I'm trying to see. I'm not, obviously, I'm not going to reveal the source, but I got a message from a guy saying that uh, uh, some of this has to do with that drink company, the uh, Diageo. Uh, Diageo. That yeah. is, if you look at, can you type in what Diageo's market cap is? They're Pull up. Massive. Type in Diageo market cap. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, right there. If you just type in Diageo market cap, market cap, $81 wow. billion. Yeah. Dollars. And what this insider said to me, just purely on what could happen, is given, I'm not, again, I'm not giving a source. It speculation. Could be speculation. Yeah. He said they owe him $2 billion. Huh. And he said it could be the fact that they are doing this to not have to pay him $2 billion. Wow. Now, can you just type Damn. in, maybe type in uh, Diageo owes Diddy $2 billion. See if anything like that comes up. Diageo owes Diddy $2 billion. A lot of money. Go to news. Can you go just to news t- at the top? Uh, let's see what stories pop up. Can you go a little lower? Okay. Diddy Diageo and the Clam Sean Combs business empire. Sean Diddy Combs uh, dumped by Diageo, maker of Johnny Walker. Diddy sues. Uh, Diddy sues. Uh, Sean Diddy and Combs and Diageo settle withdraw lawsuit in case of Diageo of race uh, okay, so there's something that's going on there that is, you know, kind of ugly. And obviously, the people that are saying that they're supporters of him. Everybody is talking about this. It's yeah. nonstop. Yeah. Here we go. These two uh, stepbrothers are out here. Oh, um, from a legal standpoint, uh, what does this look like? The so, raid, FBI? So, I mean, you know, you're asking me about a raid when I've seen raids happen to my clients that mm. have no business happening. I understand that there was a plane um, with one of his, uh, they called it his, dr- his drug mm-hmm. runner, his 25-year-old kid. Going to Antigua. Uh, he was arrested. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I know that. I know that obviously there are accusations of trafficking. The allegations have sparked discussions on the cultural and community implications. Law and Crime Network brought in sociologists and community leaders to discuss the potential long term effects on community trust and celebrity influence. Former music producer for Sean Diddy Combs worked on his latest album with him, suing him for sex trafficking and sexual assault and harassment. Well, they filed new court documents. And included in those documents was an unsworn declaration from Jones himself, detailing more things he saw, heard, experienced during his time working and basically living with Combs. On a more personal note, podcasters from Valley Tainment explored personal anecdotes and historical parallels, connecting Diddy's influence to previous cultural icons and their downfalls. After finding out he was recording everything, but not only celebrities, not only celebrities, I don't think it's only celebrities going to be shook. He had politicians in there. He had princes in there. Uh-oh. He also had a couple of preachers in there. Oh, damn. <laughs> Is he talking about who I think he's talking about? Oh, uh, you think? Is he? Hallelujah. Cat Williams commented on that. Cat Williams definitely brought him on a preacher. What comes next? Valley Taman hosts a roundtable with legal experts to predict possible legal scenarios and discuss what Diddy might face in the coming months. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. To learn <laughs> some Flavor s- Camp. Yeah, Flavor that's camp. what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's gonna in pre- the 90s. Do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orange like nonstop, right? No, not really. Not I mean, really. Did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. To wrap up, we'll listen to a special commentary from Law & Crime Network where they speculate on the future of Diddy's career and public life based on outcomes from similar high-profile cases. And now the potential downfall of his empire and legacy has taken the hip-hop community by storm. But was the writing always on the wall for Diddy's alleged behavior? Several celebrities have casually spoken out about his so-called parties, which lawsuits have alleged to be breeding grounds for sex assault and trafficking. Clues of what was allegedly behind the curtain began to emerge in November, when Diddy's former girlfriend Cassie Ventura sued the mogul in federal court on allegations of rape and a decade-long pattern of physical and sexual abuse. Thank you for joining us for this in-depth look at how the podcasting world is reacting to the Diddy sex cult allegations. These discussions show the power of media to shape, challenge, and expand our understanding of the news. Stay tuned for more episodes that go beyond the headlines.